There are more than 190 different breeds if you want a purebred dog. Her name is Mariah, and she's a pug. This is Yvonne. She's a seven-year-old Cairn Terrier. This is my dog, Baby's Breath. She is an Ibethan hound. This is Roy, and he's a Bernese Mountain Dog. You need to find one that, that fits your lifestyle, your activity level. I love their personality. They have, they're very comical, they're funny. They're very fun. They have minds of their own. She likes me. They're clowns. They're funny, they love everybody, they get along with everybody. They make you laugh every day. They're funnier than I am, for sure. <laughs> uh, they're very loyal, very loving. Purebred dog owners are a breed all their own. For some, it's become a lifelong passion. I'm striving to, to produce something that's good. With each generation, I want to try to improve on the generation that came before. It's a good girl. It's a good girl. Dedicated purebred dog breeders are always striving to achieve the perfect breed standard. The road to a perfect animal starts at the dog shows. This is the Alberta Kennel Club Winter Classic Show of 2017. There's probably just under 600 dogs here, and there's dogs that are competing for their best breed, and then they go on to compete for best in group, which ends up at the end of the day for best in show. <laughs> to win best in show at a dog show is the ultimate. What the judge looks for, they're not so much comparing each dog to each other as, a, as the breed standard. Each breed has a, a blueprint. The judge has that picture in their mind and they're comparing it to that. It can get very competitive, very competitive. And I, I hate to make this comparison, but if you ever watch those Tots and Tiara type shows, you can, there's a little bit of that in this too. You can, and they're, they're like your children, right? And it's very hard to take criticism when you invest so much in them, right? And you have to keep it separate and, you know, but I'm not taking it personally. You know, I need their dogs. I'm a little nervous, I won't lie. I shouldn't, I do this a lot, I shouldn't be nervous, but sometimes showing your own dog and stuff and there's expectations is almost worse. It's, I'll be fine, but yeah, you just sort of, you know, you hope they do well and everything. National Kennel Association set breed standards. For a Shetland Sheepdog or Sheltie, the best of breed must meet a long list of ideals, including height, head shape, and even length of tail. My name is Rick Thompson, and I'm an AKC judge. I'm licensed for judging Shetland Sheepdogs. One of the first things I look for when I'm judging a Shetland Sheepdog is the profile, the outline of the dog, because every breed should have a specific shape. When you look at them from the side profile, you ought to be able to immediately identify what breed that is. We've got several colors in the breed, Shetland Sheepdogs, and I personally like all the colors. You know, it's not a part of my decision-making process. So Barry won Select Dog, which was the, the best male runner-up. I'm thrilled. This is Blackberry, otherwise known as Canadian Grand Champion Excellence, American Grand Champion, Linkridge Blackberry, RN, CGN, ROM, C. And I'm Karen Linkletter. He's got multiple best in shows and went to Westminster and got a merit award there. It was a little bit of a bucket list thing, something I'd always wanted to do. You know, you see it on TV and it's, it's so neat with the green carpets and being in New York and everything. And I'd love to do it again. And I don't know if, with this dog or not, but maybe with one of his kids. Oh, very. He's seven now, so he's a veteran, so I'm slowing down the, the, the campaigning, dog showing with him and focusing a little bit more on his breeding and, and some of his offspring. I've got some of his puppies here that I'm raising up now and hopefully to fill his shoes. And I mean, in a lot of ways, this is a dog of a lifetime and you're lucky to get one at all. So if I get something almost as good, I'll still be thrilled. <laughs> Blackberry's many awards have made him a popular stud dog. Marnie Keeper is hoping to achieve that same success with her young Great Dane, Margaret. Margaret is a Great Dane. She's two years old. Margaret, come on. They're called the Apollo of dogs um, because of their size, but 
the big thing that draws people to them is their gentleness and their love of people. Good girl. Bring it here. Good girl. According to Breed Standard, the Great Dane's powerful body must be in proportion to its head, a chiseled form with almond-shaped eyes and square jaw. While there are six accepted colors for Danes, brindles and fawns are the most common. I, I would like to see her in the top five Great Danes in Canada. There is a bit of a, a stigma there in the, the Great Dane world that you know there's a hierarchy of, of who wins. She's, Margaret is, is pretty special, so I think that, that she could definitely be up there and actually show people that you don't have to just be a fawn to win. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I grew up on a farm and we had dogs, we had cats. They were never allowed in the house just because of how things were back then. You make adjustments and you, you figure it out. I don't know where your tongue has been. Lay down. Yeah, lay down. I guess our, our year is going to head towards... In May, we've got the Calgary Kennel and Obedience Club. And after that, we're going to head out to Kelowna. There's Saskatoon, there's Regina, Grand Prairie. There's also the big show in Edmonton. I plan on going up to, to Prince George. A couple shows around Calgary, and I guess all culminating up to Phoenix, Arizona for the Great Dane Club of America. That's about 500 Great Danes in one spot, so I think you'd be a little overwhelmed, but... Uh, I'll stay home. Hard to say. <laughs> I don't go to dog shows. <laughs> um, that's something I, I've tried early in our relationship to go to dog shows. I just found it was her arena. She excelled at it. I, I've said this to her before and maybe it makes her mad, but I don't like how some people get in that ring, in that area. The nicest people can turn into the biggest jerks because they get too competitive and it should be fun. So, I don't go to them anymore. Jason, come down. If somebody was saying, well, just off the street, how do I get a new? I would suggest you go to one of the dog shows. Look around, it's always new centered. My name is Tubby Miller. I have two Newfoundlands. Well, they're both six years old. Dayton is a girl, and she weighs about 95 pounds. Neil, last time I weighed him, he weighed 162 pounds. I had four Nofis, did the shows, different things at the shows out at Spruce Meadows. They did obedience as well. My wife, Dugan, she loved the idea of the Noof. When we got our first one, that was it. She was old, couldn't be alive without a Noof. So I just carried on from there. I've been told by a few people that I have the largest Noof memorabilia collection in Canada. A lot of times I come in here and I walk around, all the way around, and relive in memories. A sweater made out of Newfoundland dog hair. My wife took the time to knit it. When Dugan was in the hospital, we knew she wasn't coming out. And I had the dogs, and that, that really helped. Uh, I had to look after them. When she passed away, I'd think about Dugan and I would uh, be petting them and talking to them about her. Yeah, good girl. And they really helped, really did. These are dogs of past. I just did, I don't like to let my pets go. I want to keep them with me. This one here is, uh, this is brazen. So I kept the, the little tag that was actually on the urn and then just wrapped them, wrapped them up. Um, a lot of them as well, this is, this is Ulrich. This is, this is the love of my life, basically. We lost him just almost a year ago and, uh, and his collar stays with him as well. Nobody will ever wear that collar again. It's, uh, he was, he was an extremely, important dog in my life. For whatever reason, I just, I love all my dogs, but I just, he could do absolutely no wrong. Blackberry, when he was four months old, um, I had him in the bathroom with me when I was having a shower to keep him out of trouble. And he actually 
got into one of those twill bath mats and swallowed about 20 feet of string, which ended up causing a blockage and it, it really it, it tied his intestines in knots and it was a really serious surgery and they had to remove a lot of intestine and stitch it up and it was touch and go for a while and, and being a young dog it was, yeah, it was scary and I wasn't sure he was ever going to be quite right. Um, but he, he pulled through and he was fine. I think had it been one $20,000 bill, no way. I'm, I couldn't. I wouldn't have had that kind of money. But it kind of came in $2,000 increments, which I managed to scrape by one way or another. And I, and then I think once you'd, I'd put in so much money, I sure as heck wasn't going to let him <laughs> go now. And, and this, this, this dog has been special from the beginning, and I don't know why. Let's go see Echo. Blackberry made a full recovery and is now a sought-after dog for breeding new generations of Shetland sheepdogs. So Echo came all the way from Hawaii for a date with Blackberry. Echo herself is a champion and she has multiple obedience titles as well. Barry's girlfriend this week. He licks their ears. <laughs> this is doggy foreplay. <laughs> this is what he does. <laughs> It's not done so much the old-fashioned way anymore, and it is done mostly artificially. Sorry, guys. Not as much fun. Barry has a, a reproductive vet that, that helps out in that department, and, and they analyze the, you know, the, the quality of the sample. And so it just, it's just to improve our odds of getting a really nice litter. The general public needs to be aware that a lot goes into breeding a quality dog and they need to do their research. And doing the, the grooming like I do a little bit, we see so many problem dogs out of these, you know, I bought it on Kijiji and it was cute. It was a Shitteranian. <laughs> they have a, and they have a wonderful name that's catchy, but this dog is, you know, has a, a short-nosed dog bred to a long-nosed dog and now its teeth don't line up and its legs are crooked and their eyes are bad and and these poor people are dealing with health concerns for the rest of that dog's life and that's that's not fair. A Sheltie puppy sells for about a thousand dollars as a pet. So people think that we make all this money breeding dogs but what they don't realize is how much money goes into that. The stud fee alone is 850 On top of that, if they are shipping semen, it's about $150 for each shipment, and generally we do two or three. They do progesterone testing, and often sort of three to five at $100 a pop. And that's just the, the litter being born, the actual breeding of the litter. On top of that, it's all the testing of the, of the breeding stock. The genetic testing, the, just the basic health testing, we test for hips, eyes, thyroid, Don Wildebrand's disease, MDR1, all that testing. I think I added it up once to be about $1,500, all said and done, for the basic initial testing. Good, lovely, oh, thank you. oh my goodness. <laughs> I was thinking about maybe going to San Francisco, and there's a dog show in Spokane on the way, so I could kind of get two American shows in. I know, I know it's crazy. My dad is a banker, doing the horses and the dogs and the art really doesn't fit into his ideals of <laughs> probably what he thinks I should be doing. Don't get me wrong, he's very supportive. He grumbles a lot. But I think he would like me to have more stability in my life and, and something that has a better retirement plan. I guess I think about the economics. You, you gotta pay your way and it's, you know, it's, Barry's been, paying a lot of the way for in the last little while, but that's not gonna go forever. And, you know, berries are, Karen will tell you, they're all one in a hundred dog or whatever. So it looks like I'm shipping that dog home this weekend and I may end up going to Vancouver. If I need to send chilled semen, are you around on Saturday? Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Take the little blue boxes to the airport. So. I don't. I'm sure you didn't envision yourself delivering dog semen to the airport, but it certainly my, helps me out. <laughs> my, my new career, the, the frozen semen delivery man. <laughs> it's all good when there's boxes to be delivered. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
All dogs, as from history tells, all dogs derived from one animal and man bred different dogs to different dogs to achieve what they wanted. And that's why we have so many different breeds in the world. I honestly think it's like uh, any animal in the wild. There's Every time you turn around, there's another breed going extinct. And I, I, I think it'd be tragic for any breed, no matter what they were used for or why they are living, they should not be extinct. They should always be around. They give me uh, satisfaction of my working with them and them doing what I'm teaching them. You treat them right and they're gonna give all the love back to you. I look at them and I can just see their love and devotion. It's just something in their eyes that, that tells me that's what it is. I love the new dog so much, I look forward to getting up in the morning. I loved every minute of it. Even after all the years, I started doing this in 1997. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm gonna throw up. The minute I walk in the ring, the nerves just go. National Breed Club sets the standard, and then the judges need to be well aware of what they are looking for. Color, size, gait, chest, structure, croup, tail set. Primarily head, Danes are, are known as a head breed. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. Yay, thank you. <laughs> really nice moving bit. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Margaret took best of opposite sex. Her her boyfriend here, Jixer, took uh, took best of breed. She so she was the best of the girls in the ring. Margaret is turning into just a phenomenal dog, and so hopefully when we breed Margaret, we will be able to improve even on Margaret. I think we need to start putting regulations and legislations, I guess, into, into effect that stop anybody from breeding. You know, you, I think you need to, to pay your dues and, and actually look to do it properly instead of just looking to make a buck or, geez, I've got a dog and you've got a dog, let's make dogs. I do love you, sometimes. Sometimes more than others, but I do love you. I, I can't imagine life without out a dog. You know, they're, they're more important to me than most people that I know. Good boy. Let's go see the babies. Good boy. I've had a lot of dogs, and I love them all dearly. This dog is, is I would like to say my soulmate. That sounds crazy, but, but he is. He is. This dog has been with me through thick and thin, and... I think they are like your kids, and you just do whatever you can. This breed is my passion, but there's equally passionate breeders in, in every breed, and, and they are doing it for that reason. They love the breed. They want to preserve it and produce better dogs each time. <laughs>